Ladies and gentlemen, the CHCI 44th Annual Awards Gala will begin in 15 minutes. Hello, hey, how, how are we doing? Great to see you guys. Hey. Hello. How are you guys? Hey, Nando. It's been, it's been a while, Jose. I haven't seen you in a while. And Fabio, Steph, it's been great to connect, obviously, online. But here we are. And so it's great to see each other. Hi, folks. I miss all of you. I can't wait for next year when we work together again. Greetings from Phoenix. Let's talk about some past uh, galas. Yeah. Jose, do you have any highlights? I mean, the, the best one for me was when I was a fellow back in 2012 and we got to all share the stage. Uh, and I really hope that uh, the current fellows and the incoming classes are going to be able to, to take part of that. It, it was a really exciting um, opportunity to be on stage, be able to meet Vice President Biden, now President Biden. Um, and so it was great. It was fantastic. It was really surreal. Uh, and so I really do hope that uh, next year, we get back to being in person and, and seeing you all once again. I've gone to a few galas, but my favorite one is the one when I was a fellow with um, Flavio and we got to walk together. And, you know, since that day, our cohort has been family. Yeah, it's great to reconnect and network with people, people you haven't seen in a long time. I mean, CHCI has been around for over 44 years. This is the 44th gala that's coming up. So that's pretty amazing. You know, I, I still remember the performer, Gilberto Santa Rosa. I had just uh, seen him perform in Veracruz and then to see him perform in DC that night was, it was a ton of fun. Yeah, these galas are amazing. I mean, I, I uh, in 2016 uh, was recognized as the uh, alumnus of the year uh, through CHCI and was able to meet uh, President uh, Barack Obama, which is pretty amazing, the highlight of my life, actually. That's amazing, Arnaldo, and that's exactly one of the things I really like about Gala because it's like recognizing a lot of like some of our Latino and Latina heroes that we have. So I remember Jorge Ramos getting an award. It's somebody I've always admired. And so it's really like a night for all of us. Yeah, it's a very unique event in that in that aspect. That's true. I had uh, just been to a salsa fest on Veracruz, and I remember seeing the same performer, Gilberto Santa Rosa, at the CCI Gala, and I thought, wow, just my two worlds colliding. <laughs> we took shots with Paulina Rubio in one of the galas. We were right up front, so I saw the shot glasses. It's hard to remember which one. <laughs> it's something about CHCI. I would love to enjoy each other's time and party. It seems like we have a great time every time we get together. Yeah, go into the W after for like the after, after, after party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember it's Alma like and Yanni, do you remember in our year we actually got to party with uh, Black Eyed Peas, they were the performers yeah, in our year, right. and then we were at the after party with them. Yeah, at the W. <laughs> right. We got bottle service too. Yeah, thanks to Jose. Thank you, Jose, for checking out. Time. Jose always has the hookup. Always. <laughs> always. It was that alumni stipend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the international <laughs> president right now. <laughs> well, if we're talking about drinking and alcohol and mixing drinks, we should probably in invite. Uh, uh, McGarrett in here and talk about, you know, what he's trying to make for us today and, and talk about Antorche. Hey guys, welcome. And thank you for letting me join your gala this evening with this, with this mixology class. So today we presented a cocktail for you guys that's called Antorcha, created just for you guys exclusively. We put these great kits together for you guys that you should have received at home. It has a lot of tools. Most of it you probably won't use tonight, but you'll be able to use it for your future. Everybody has your kits and ready to go? Ready. Yes, sir. So I chose the two spirits because obviously when you think of culture and you think of the Latino culture, one drink that comes to mind right away is the daiquiri. The daiquiri was invented in Cuba. Uh, the margarita is a form of the daiquiri. So the best way to do it is get the best of both worlds out of Mexico. And I got some tequila that I sent to you guys and some mezcal. And me personally, I like to use a little bit of both when I make my margarita. You guys ready to start off with your cocktail? Absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah. Awesome. So I like to kick it off with a little mezcal. It's one of my favorite spirits. And I try to do 50-50 mezcal and 50-50 um, tequila. So I'll do about an ounce of each one of these in the tin to get started. And 
And you guys have a bunch of tools that you probably won't use, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong. If you notice, this bottle's almost kicked. All right. I decided that I was doing a couple shots before we started the show. <laughs> Great idea. So we'll do about three ounces of booze. We'll do about an ounce of agave and then two ounces of citrus. But you guys have a lime and half a lime is the perfect amount of juice for you guys. So take your lime squeezer that was in your box. Get half a lime, put it in there, squeeze away. And then obviously add ice. Once you have some ice in your uh, shaker, make sure you seal it very tight. The last thing you want to do is spray liquor all over the place. And the worst part, in your face. Let's go. Shake it, shake it. Give it a good shake. Find yourself a glass nearby and pour it away. Oh, that's really good. And then I got un torcha for un you torcha. guys. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me part of this. Thank you. Appreciate gracias. it. Gracias. Let's do it. Let's make a toast, everybody. Let's do it. So to uh, successful gala 2021, that next year we all can see each other in person and network and have a great time like we've done before. Presente. Salud. Presente. Salud. Presente. 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 Oh yeah, I pulled a fork. Put the whole bottle in there. Woo. So what do you guys think? Delicious. Delicious. It's really good. Tremendo. Tremendo. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> Excelente. <clears throat> that was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say the drink is Cuban? Did someone say that? So I was saying that the drink is a Cuban uh, descent. Okay. So the daiquiri was created in Cuba in 1902, roughly. The margarita came right after in the 1938. So it was pretty That's much basically taking the best of both head, worlds both using Cuban different spirits. Yeah, I'm Mexican. Daniel's yeah. Cuban. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. There you go. So I brought you guys together. <laughs> yeah. Perfect yeah. harmony so right here. are Antorcha, if I'm understanding correctly. Leave it up to CHCI. Yes, you are Antorcha. There you go. CHCI, bringing exactly. cultures together. <laughs> Love thank it. Thank you, McGarrett. Well, thank you for having thank me, you. guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, McGarrett. Thanks for having us. Alma, I would love that y'all's nickname would be the Antorcha couple, you know, since... CHCI is basically responsible for y'all coming together. I remember when we were fellows and you all started dating and you know, it was like the big rumor of the newest couple of CHCI. <laughs> um, it's been a while though, since since that happened. What have you guys been up to since then? You're the first. No, you're the first. Uh, I work at, uh, yeah, CHCI was the one that got me into federal service now, what, seven, eight years ago. So I work at Department of Transportation now. Uh, and I, I work on the Hill still, you know, I got the fellowship with a member of Congress, Michelle Lujan Grisham, eight, nine years ago, and I haven't left the Hill. I'm the executive director of the Congressional Hispanic that's Caucus, amazing. so CHCI opened that door for me. Yeah. No, that's really exciting. I mean, we, we've all come a long way. It's, it's incredible where, where we've all been. I mean, I remember Steph was a, was a fellow, uh, way back when, so it's, <laughs> I, I, I would love to hear from all of you. Like, what has everyone been up to? I remember CHCI was not something that I knew about, and I had lived in DC, I think, already three years. And um, right now, through my placement with Senator Menendez, my desk was right next to the comms team. And I was really fortunate to meet a lot of folks on the Hill um, that really led me to where I am now. Um, I'm working for a marketing agency as a partnerships director and um, really thankful for that. That's great. So I uh, I became part of CHCI 32 years ago. I was 19 years old. Um, I was a high school student in a little town in Northern California. I worked in the agricultural fields as a farm worker. And uh, this application landed on my counselor's desk in my high school. And I applied and I got in, you know, just 
by chance. And uh, first time on an airplane heading over to Washington, D.C. the day after I graduated. And I worked for Kika that I got some committed on agriculture. Um, changed my life forever. Just, you know, gave me an opportunity to really think of what's possible and, and uh, just opened up my eyes and my perspective. And uh, since then, I spent most of my life working in technology, but I did uh, do some uh, uh, nonprofit support. I was actually appointed by Governor Brown of the state of California to oversee uh, the, state, uh, the community college of the state of California. And I spent five years doing that. Um, and then we started a family foundation uh, eight years ago supporting uh, young kids up in the upper Sacramento Valley of Sacramento of, of, of California and uh, high achieving low income kids going to uh, UC schools. So that's that's what I've been doing since uh, 32 years ago since leaving CHI. Wow, that's amazing. I know that reminds me, you know, just the importance of paying it forward. You know, to all the people that have supported us along the way. Uh, when I had the opportunity to be a fellow in Steph's class, I, I really I got to really take a lot of the education that I learned in graduate school and apply it on the Hill working with Congressman Raghudi Harva. And it was that experience of seeing the way that his office worked with nonprofits from the district when they would visit the DC office, that I actually applied to come back uh, to Phoenix. And today I, I direct a multiracial coalition dedicated to voting rights and election reform. So uh, it's called the Arizona Democracy Collaborative. And, you know, I kind of hit the ground running, not knowing that this would be such a busy legislative session when it came to bills to restrict voting and make it more difficult. Uh, but it, it's really the lessons I learned that you got to work with everybody uh, from CCI and, and that really prepared me for this. That's amazing. Yeah, I kind of agree with everybody. So I think CCI was a little bit of setting kind of the seeds of the future. So it's really what helped me. I was in a member in the office and on the house side as an intern in 2004. Um, and it's because of that and getting to work on a lot of health disparity work that I decided to pursue public health. So I got my PhD and then now I combine it with law enforcement. So as of this week, I am the chief data officer for the DEA. So I'm really excited to kind of put the both things together. Congratulations. Congrats, Naomi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm really proud of all of us. I, you know, it's really amazing to, to really see the impact that CHCI has had on everyone. It, it's really interesting because very similar to Arnoldo um, and Alma, you know, I'm, I'm from California, uh, son of farm workers, you know, immigrant. I was undocumented uh, up until my first year in college. And, and you never think that you're going to have these opportunities that CHCI provided all of us. Um, and so really thinking through, you know, these last eight, nine years in, in my career, CHCI has always been a part of everything that I've done be it connections for employment, being, you know, with volunteer service. I, I get to sit on board with uh, Flavio and Daniel right now uh, with the National Alumni Association. And that's a huge privilege being able to, you know, continue to work with young alumni. Um, and then in my personal life, being able to work now in tech uh, within the health industry, coming from philanthropy and politics, you name it. Um, and that's really all thanks to CHCI. And so it's really amazing to hear what all of you are doing because that's the purpose of this organization, to really build the great things that we're going to do tomorrow as, as the leaders of today. So it, it's great to hear what everyone's doing. For sure. And like what you mentioned with the younger generations and the new fellows that are coming in as a director of mentorship over here in the DC metro area. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Same here. It's, it's a very, very unique opportunity for, you know, our communities and me coming from low income Cuban family over in Miami. I didn't know what CHCI was until a friend told me. And I mean, like, like we're all saying, you know, just changed my career trajectory for the rest of my life. It's, it's a very, very unique program. I know here in Phoenix, anytime uh, I meet, I run into a CHCI alum, you know, we, we share stories, we share experiences, but also we talk about, you know, how can we help other high school students, other undergrads learn about these programs, you know, and, and take the time to review those applications and personal statements and essays. And I, I think it's the reoccurring theme of generosity that makes me still very proud to be a part of this uh, CHCI family. Yeah, so I think playing out with what Jose was saying, I think a lot of CHCI for me is about the theme of the, the gala, about being presente. And for all of us, I kind of we all are kind of ambassadors of CHCI. We show up for each other. Um, we recognize when there's talent. For me, it was actually really special. So I, when I was an undergrad, I organized the first ever Latino Ivy League conference. 
Um, and that was actually something that Marco reached out to me out of the blue. Um, and that's, I've known him ever since. Um, and so that's just, yeah, I think this theme is perfect for this year, especially since we're all so disconnected. Um, but yeah, and I appreciate being here with you guys today. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. the CHCI 44th Annual oh, hold, Awards hold on. Gala hold on, is guys. about I think, to I think begin. it's starting. I think we got, yeah. It's oh, great no. to see you all. We, we love you. Well, yeah. Salud. 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 Okay. We didn't say it. Miss you. I'll see you all next year in person. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to begin the show. The views expressed by guests during tonight's program do not necessarily reflect the views of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute or imply an endorsement of those views by the organization. And now, sit back, relax, and enjoy this evening's gala. Presente. It's more than a word. It's a belief that we can come together to make history. To break barriers. To build a legacy that continues to inspire Latino communities across the country. To advance our cause for strength, equity, and opportunity. It's our mission to provide inspiration and unity. To develop the next generation of Latino leaders and move them to achieve excellence in all our endeavors. And to create a brighter future. It's our commitment to leading the way. Presente. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome tonight's host, award-winning journalist, best-selling author, viral speaker, and co-founder at Go Like, Mariana Atencio. Buenas noches, good evening, and welcome to the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute's 44th Annual Awards Gala. I'm Mariana Atencio, y qué honor, what an honor to be your host this evening. Now, for anyone who joined us early for the watch party, please save me a copy of that drink recipe, will you? Thank you very much. Now, as the world keeps adjusting to new realities, our community once again shows incredible resilience to face every challenge. I honestly feel so much joy and so much hope tonight, knowing that this celebration of our culture is also a way for all of us to rise and become stronger together as a vital part of this great nation of ours. We've been through a lot in the past year, but I have to confess, last year I also had one of the most special Valentine's Day of my life. And it wasn't about flowers or chocolate, no crean. It was the day I declared my love to this country by becoming an American citizen in one of the last in-person ceremonies before the pandemic. And I can't describe just how overcome with emotion I was. I still get even recounting it right now. After coming here from Venezuela 12 years ago on a scholarship to study at Columbia Journalism School, I went through five different visas and I felt that I didn't belong anywhere. The Latino community became my harbor, my familia. And that Valentine's Day was like, it was the end of a marathon, knowing that I was incredibly fortunate to have been able to wait in line to begin with. My naturalization package, I remember, included a letter from the president himself. It read, dear fellow American, no matter where you come from, you shared the sacred rights, responsibilities, and duties that unites us as one people. While reading this, you know, I realized this content wasn't new to me. It is exactly what I know as the essence of being Latino in America. And even though we're hosting this event virtually again this year, I wanna remind everyone that this is how we do better. We work hard for our dreams and we work hard to take care of one another, regardless of, of social distance, language, or frontera. Since the time of our ancestors, we always come together to push forward and to build on the achievements of our people. So let's make this an American fiesta. 
You can start by posting about our gala. Please be sure to tag us and use the hashtag CHCIHHM21. It's a pleasure to open tonight's event with a very special Color Guard presentation. We are joined by a group of veterans from the American GI Forum, a congressionally chartered Hispanic veterans and civil rights organization founded in 1948. They are accompanied by members of the Young Marines, a national youth program for boys and girls focused on leadership and community service. Please join me wherever you're watching from as we observe the presentation of the colors and see how the torch is carried forward from one generation of leaders to the next at the Milwaukee County War Memorial Center. Detail, then hut. Right shoulder, hunt. Left, pace. And a half step, forward, hut. Left, 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 left. F, 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 F. Detail, march time. March. Right face. Present, hands. Oh, say can you see So proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming, who brought strife and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the Right shoulder, hunts. Detail. Left, pace. And a half step, forward, hunt. F, 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 left, left. Out. 
we'd like to express our sincere appreciation to the Milwaukee County War Memorial Center, the distinguished veterans who have served our country in the armed forces, who presented the colors tonight, and the beautiful voice of Milwaukee native Suheili Pinedo. Tonight, we recognize and celebrate CHCI's ongoing mission and the supporters who make their work possible. We'll also be honoring some of the most outstanding American Latino leaders whose dedication to positive change has made a lasting impact in our community. And throughout the evening, you're gonna hear stories of leadership and empowerment and meet some of CHCI's outstanding alumni. So, ¿están listos? Vamos. To kick off this evening's celebration, I'm delighted to introduce the president and CEO of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute, an Afro-Latino who has worked tirelessly to develop young Latino leaders, self-professed music lover, Jamaicano by way of Mexicano from New York, Marco Davis. Marco, you look amazing. You look fantastic as well. Great to be with you tonight. Good to see you, Mariana. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and being our MC. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to CHCI's 44th Annual Awards Gala, celebrating America's Latino community. Thank you for joining us. Your continued support for CHCI's mission is what keeps us going. For those of you who may not be familiar with us, CHCI is a national, nonpartisan, nonprofit leadership development institute founded in 1978 by four Hispanic members of Congress. Today, we remain committed to providing leadership and policymaking experiences to emerging Latino public service leaders. Our foundation is in developing new leaders, first to fill the ranks of Capitol Hill staff and other government roles, but over the years, we have also evolved to foster a group of leaders for the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. Throughout tonight's event, we will pay tribute to some of our most distinguished leaders and recognize our community's perseverance during the many challenges that continue to face our nation. We will be presenting awards to iconic figures, along with recognizing the members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, or CHC, and showcasing the emerging leaders in CHCI's leadership programs. We will also be joined by some of the most distinguished leaders in the nation with important messages for our community. I'm grateful for those of you who attended our leadership conference this week and for the participation of so many leaders, from the CHC members to corporate executives, community experts and advocates, and all the journalists who moderated such thoughtful discussions. Video recordings from all of the sessions are available on our website. The planning for both the conference and tonight's awards gala was overseen by our Hispanic Heritage Month Committee, co-chaired by Congressmember Tony Cardenas and Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. Thanks for your leadership. This year, many challenges have continued for the Latino community. The ongoing impact of the pandemic, the outsized economic struggles that have hit us, and the continuing need for greater equity are all issues we continue to face. CHCI is challenging the private sector to invest in our community and to believe in the skills, talents, and value that Latinos bring to the nation. And we seek policies that advance our community by reducing barriers and enabling more opportunities, strengthening our entire country. If there's one overarching message we need to keep in mind, it is the theme of tonight's gala, Presente, Latinos leading the way. We must continue to carry the torch of knowledge, experience, and leadership and pass it on to the next generation of American Latinos. It is this idea that inspires me about CHCI. It's about our young people and about the leaders in our community. While the country continues to navigate this difficult period, we as a community know how to lead together. And as an organization, we are investing in and engaging our own leaders who will make a lasting difference. Before we go any further into tonight's celebration, I'd like to recognize and appreciate the generous support our partners and sponsors provide, because it's critical to CHCI's success. I would particularly like to highlight the support we receive from Bank of America, our lead gala sponsor for the seventh year in a row. We are so grateful for their commitment and friendship. And now, a word from our friends at Bank of America. On behalf of Bank of America, and as a board member of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute, thank you for joining us at today's awards gala. Let me first start by congratulating America Ferreira and civil rights leader Sylvia Mendez as this year's Medallion of Excellence recipients. 
their contributions and leadership to our Latino community and to our American society at large has been tremendous and truly inspirational. Bank of America has been honored to partner with CHCI for more than 30 years to support leadership development for Latino students and young professionals. Our shared goal is to help advance our Latino community through the public policy and federal legislative process. We believe this work is very, very important. And it starts with our own investments in Hispanic Latino talent at our own company. Our workforce is 19% Hispanic Latino, which exceeds industry benchmarks. And we continue to focus on being a great place to work by promoting inclusion and professional development. We are very proud of the 12 million Hispanic Latino clients that we serve today, which includes 1 million Latino owned small business owners. And to support financial wellness, we are proud of our online program, Mejores Habitos Financieros, known as Better Money Habits in English, which provides free online tools and education in Spanish. And we continue to look for better ways to better serve and connect with our Latino community. As an example, we've developed and created Hispanic Latino business councils across the top 20 Hispanic Latino markets in the US. These councils consist of our Hispanic Latino bankers across all of our lines of businesses who are closely together to better understand the financial needs of our Latino clients and then connecting them with our own expertise. Lastly, we're continuing to deliver on our $1.25 billion commitment to advance racial equality and economic opportunity. From equity funding to Latino-owned small businesses, to supporting Hispanic-serving institutions that connect students to a career. As we work with many nonprofit organizations across the United States to promote and build thriving communities, we hold our partnership with CHCI as an outstanding example of what can be achieved together. Because together, we will continue our commitment to prepare young Latinos for a brighter future. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Raul, and thank you for your support. Coming up later on CHCI's 44th Annual Awards Gala, we'll be honoring Emmy Award winner America Ferrara and lifetime activist Sylvia Mendez. You'll want to stick around for that. My name is Alejandra Linas Chantres, and I'm originally from the Bay Area. Being raised by an immigrant family was what motivated me to pursue a career in, in policy and anything that will enable me to be a change maker. Every day it motivates me and these experiences of people of color, um, particularly being Latina in a classroom, continue to motivate me to try to push for equity and for accountability in different spaces. Without CHCI, I'm not sure how I would have made it to be on the Hill. One of the reasons I have been able to be successful here in D.C. is because I'm not here alone. I'm here with a cohort of Latinx youth who are being my support system. CHCI has helped me in being able to pursue a career where I can explore the intersection of health, immigration, and, and technology as it affects uh, the Latino community. This past January, CHCI was proud to announce the election of some new additions to our board of directors, along with our new chair, Congress member Nanette Diaz Barragan from California's 44th district. Chair Barragan has a deep commitment to CHCI's mission, knowing firsthand the value of an early career opportunity that exposes one to the policy arena and having mentors that can guide your professional development. Her guidance and insight has been invaluable to me and we are grateful for her leadership. She sets an extraordinary example, not just for Latinas and other young women, but for all of us, fighting with tenacity in Congress and beyond 
to make the world better. Welcome, Chair Barragan, to CHEI's 44th Annual Awards Gala. Thank you, Marco, for your exemplary leadership during another challenging year for our community. I want to extend my personal thank you to everyone who participated in the leadership conference and to all of you joining us this evening for our 44th Annual Awards Gala. This is a special evening for the Latino community, and I'm also grateful to everyone who has participated in celebrating this year's Hispanic Heritage Month. It is an honor to serve as CHCI's chair and to work alongside the organization's dedicated staff, alumni, program participants, and our board and advisory council members. The mission of CHCI continues to be vital to the future of the Latino community. There are many challenges and opportunities we face together that require leadership in policymaking and the need for the next generation of public policy leadership can be addressed through CHCI's programs. During difficult periods, underrepresented communities are often forgotten and disproportionately impacted. COVID-19 and the ensuing economic crisis has been wreaking havoc throughout the Latino community. Latinos have faced large unemployment as a direct result of the pandemic, particularly among Latina workers. According to a June report, from UCLA's Latino Policy and Politics Initiative, Latinas were more likely than other groups to drop out of the workforce during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we know that an alarming number of Latinas who have left the workforce still have not returned. More study is needed and more deliberate efforts to get behind this segment of our society that before the pandemic, led the nation in small business launches and were projected to increase their numbers in the workforce at a higher rate than any other group over the next 10 years. That has all changed. We can't leave Latinas behind. Latinas like Alejandra Siciliano, a 53-year-old immigrant from El Salvador who fled gang violence in her home seeking a better life for her and her daughter in Los Angeles. Alejandra lives in Southgate, a part of my district that is heavily Latino, in a multi-generational home. She lost her job at the Four Points by Sheraton Hotel at Los Angeles International Airport. Up until she was laid off, she worked throughout the pandemic, even as guests at her hotel ignored public health officials and refused to wear masks. She's diabetic has burned through her savings and exhausted most of the government benefits made available to people suffering unemployment as a result of the pandemic. She told the Los Angeles Times that without any work at all, I don't know how I can survive. It is the responsibility of everyone here this evening and everyone who supports CHCI to make sure that Alejandra and Latinas like her survive, re-enter the workforce, and once again, form a thriving and growing Latina workforce at all levels. We will not leave them behind. As the issues around access and vaccine education are being addressed at the state and local levels, Latinos who live day to day have families to care for and have bills to pay are struggling to find the time to be able to go to places where they can receive the shot. Misinformation about the vaccine including about cost and immigration status eligibility, along with practical concerns such as missing work because of vaccine side effects, are holding many Latinos back from getting vaccinated. And as we've learned, misinformation can cost lives. We need better policies. We need people calling for policies that support our community and help it advance. That is why I am fully in support of CHCI's mission to develop leaders that includes policy experience from identifying climate solutions to protecting our dreamers to thriving in a post-pandemic society. We are showing that our community is presente, that we are leading the way. I am honored to serve as CHCI's chair, particularly in these times.
Now, I am pleased to present this year's Chairs Award. This is a unique recognition because it's not given every year and it's typically awarded to an individual or group that have dedicated their careers to improving the lives of American Latinos. The recipient of this award is wholly at the chair's discretion and past recipients have included novelist Sandra Cisneros and musical artist Mark Anthony. This year, I have decided to do something different. I have dedicated the chair's award to all Hispanic essential workers across the country. Every day, your hard work and dedication is helping to maintain a sense of normalcy while providing critical services to your communities. I am honored by the sacrifices made by those who have had to pick up extra shifts, work nights and weekends, even in the face of inadequate personal protection equipment in order to care for yourselves and your families. To all the Latinos who have borne the brunt of this pandemic, your stories inspire me. Now, let's be inspired together while we watch just a few of the many examples of perseverance during this pandemic. This is a special tribute to all Hispanic essential workers. The following stories are just a few examples of these heroes in action. Community organizer Fernando Martinez led his team of eight COVID-19 outreach workers in two counties into the agricultural fields where many have yet to be vaccinated in order to bring accurate COVID-19 information and PPE to the nearly 14,000 essential farm workers who were and are working in close quarters throughout the pandemic. Despite the challenges and hazards of the pandemic, Danny Cavazos, solid waste truck driver for the city of El Paso, continues to bring energy to the workplace and a quality of work that is hard to match. He takes pride in his work, which in turn inspires all other drivers to work harder and do better. In the midst of dark and threatening times, Mr. Cavazos went out of his way to buy a toy truck for a little boy who is always out to greet him on his route. His self-motivation and dedication to his work inspires us all to do more. Farm worker and campesina Manuela Ramirez Amado has been a champion as a group organizer for Líderes Campesinas. During the pandemic, she bravely continued working as a farm worker, assisting with COVID-19 education, mask making, and advocating for health and justice for farm workers. She coordinated this work with stakeholders on COVID-19 testing and immunization. An agent of change in the Coachella Valley, her long-term organizing efforts have made her an extraordinary example and role model to thousands of other campesinas and adolescents. In the food and service industry, first-generation Latina Carissa Hernandez Paredes of Boyle Heights, California, reimagined the running of her businesses, House of Chelas and Nativo, two bar restaurants that quickly pivoted to take out food and carry out cocktails during the pandemic. The innovation enabled her to keep employees employed and her business dream alive in an area hard hit by COVID-19. She used her social media platforms to bring awareness to the Latino community about COVID safety procedures and the importance of staying unified during the time of struggle. Lucy Herrera, who is from Ramona Gardens and serves the youth of Ramona Gardens, is a leader in California District 34. Throughout the shutdown, she was instrumental in keeping Legacy LA open for students. When there was so much uncertainty in the world, Lucy made sure students received academic support, had food to eat, and felt at home at Legacy LA. Lucy's leadership shone every day. Corporal Jonathan Padilla currently serves as the Major Crimes Investigations Corporal in the Kissimmee Police Department's Criminal Investigations Division. Prior to his promotion to Corporal, Padilla served for five years in the POP's unit, which is responsible for coordinating the police department's community involvement initiatives. 
During his tenure there, Corporal Padilla took on the added responsibility of leading the Police Explorer Unit, an opportunity for middle and high school aged young people to become involved in the police department. The Explorer Unit thrived under his tutelage and he developed relationships with many young people in the community that will pay dividends well into the future. Despite the pandemic and being at higher risk to contract the virus, Maria Troy committed herself to continue serving the most vulnerable community. Maria has been working diligently to provide resources and mental health interpretation services for the monolingual families in San Luis Obispo County. Her dedication and passion have been a great asset to the Promotores Collaborative and the Latinx community. Alejandra Salazar is a nurse working at the CVS testing site in Panorama City, California. She is bilingual and has been instrumental in the outreach and scheduling of vaccinations for the San Fernando Valley site. Patricia Rojas, a registered nurse, worked inside a tent temporarily set up outside the emergency department at New York Presbyterian Columbia University Irving Medical Center as the city dealt with the overwhelming number of patients. Patricia, who is of Dominican descent, grew up in Washington Heights, and she was among our nation's first frontline workers at the start of the pandemic. She worked tirelessly to support our community, and she has been recognized by the National Association of Hispanic Nurses for her excellence in serving New York City's Hispanic community. We salute these and the many other essential workers who despite the risk have given so wholeheartedly of their time and energy to serve their communities at home and at large and their country in this perilous time. They embody the ingenuity and the selfless commitment to community that characterizes the great heart of nuestra gente. Presente, Latinos leading the way. While the Chair's Award is dedicated to all the essential workers who helped the nation persevere throughout this pandemic, we thought it also important to have a special recognition tonight for a different group of workers who proved themselves to be essential for our nation's democracy earlier this year. As we all know, the U.S. Capitol was attacked on January 6th. In addition to the members of Congress who experienced that trauma firsthand and whose lives were in danger, we want to acknowledge and show our appreciation for the many other people who make up the Capitol community including the dedicated congressional staffers, among them a large number of CHCI alumni and other dedicated Hispanic individuals, as well as the food service, custodial, and other workers who keep the entire capital complex running on any given day, including that fateful day. And as part of this recognition, CHCI salutes and thanks the Metropolitan Police Department of the District of Columbia and the U.S. Capitol Police for their selfless bravery that day and truly living up to the motto, protect and serve. Best exemplified by our own community's U.S. Capitol Police Sergeant, Aquilino Gonel, and so many of our other fellow Hispanic sisters and brothers in uniform that day. His incredibly moving testimony before Congress shook many of us to our core. Thank you for your service, Sergeant Gonel and the many other people who put their lives at risk to ensure our democracy would not fall that day. You two have each been presente, and you have been true heroes leading the way. I'm Alfonso Lopez, and I'm from New York City. I work in the Office of Federal Affairs uh, for the city of New York uh, here in DC and I continue to work primarily on Homeland Security policy. One thing I've learned here in D.C. is that there's no one you can't connect with. That's something I learned very early on at CHCI because you know, I was surrounded by people from every corner of the country and every Latino background that you can imagine. Each individual person adding their own flavor to it 
makes this country what it is. You see such a variety of ideas and dreams and people bring their own sabrosura to it and their own sort of like gusto to it and it's, the possibilities are endless. CHCI shows you a snippet, a flavor of what the Latino community is. You never know who you're gonna meet and what ideas they're gonna bring or what ideas you're gonna impart to them. It's a two-way street. Programs like this not only expose you to that and may let you understand that that's possible, but it also prepares you for it. There are people that will see you and see the potential in you and your product, you know, the kind of work that you produce and the ethic that you bring to it will make folks take notice. And this is sort of the platform for that. Many people work to hold the door open for you and it's your job to hold the, hold the door open for others. And so that's, if nothing else, that drives me more than anything. Every time another Latino goes into a position of power or even into an office where, where there hasn't been someone there before, it opens the doors of possibility. And possibility is really what the community is all about. The possibilities for the future are endless and it's, it's in our hands to make it what we want it to be. CHCI is working towards a brighter future by developing the next generation of Latino leaders. This work is made possible due to the efforts and support from the Congressional Hispanic Caucus in Congress that enables us to accomplish so much more for our comunidad. You represent us, you fight, you speak up for us where it matters most. And with this, I want to introduce these amazing leaders, these luchadores, to you now. Congressman Dr. Raul Ruiz, representing California's 36th Congressional District. Congressmember Nanette Barragan, California's 44th District. Congressman Adriano Espaillat, New York's 13th Congressional District. Congressman Darren Soto, Florida's 9th District. Congresswoman Teresa Ledger Fernandez, New Mexico's 3rd Congressional District. Congresswoman Lucille Royval Allard, California's 40th Congressional District. Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, New York 7th District. Congresswoman Grace Napolitano, California's 32nd District. I'm Raul Grijalva, and I represent District 3 in Arizona. Congresswoman Linda Sanchez, California's 38th District. Congressman Jim Costa, representing the wonderful people of the 16th Congressional District of California. Hello, Congressman Henry Cuellar, District 28 from the state of Texas. Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey. Audio Series, 8th Congressional District of New Jersey. Congressman Gregorio Kilili Camacho Saban, Northern Mariana Islands. Congressman Tony Cárdenas, California's 29th District. Texas Congressman Joaquin Castro, 20th District. Hi, I'm Congressman Juan Vargas from the 51st Congressional District of California. Congressman Filemon Vela, Texas's 34th Congressional District. Pete Aguilar, California's 31st District. Hi, I'm Congressman Ruben Gallego from Phoenix, Arizona, District 7. Congresswoman Norma Torres, California's 35th Congressional District. Congressman Salud Carvajal, California's 24th Congressional District. Congressman Luis Correa, California 46th, the best. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, U.S. Senator from the state of Nevada. Congressman Vicente Gonzalez, Texas District 15. Congressman Jimmy Gomez from California's 34th Congressional District. Congressman Antonio Delgado, New York's 19th District. Congresswoman Veronica Escobar, Texas 16. Congressman Jesus Chuy Garcia, Illinois 4th Congressional District. Congresswoman Sole Garcia, Texas 29 in the Houston area. Congressman Mike Levin, California's 49th District. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez from New York's 14th Congressional District. 
Michael Sinicholas, Congressman from Guam. Lori Verrero Trahan, Massachusetts 3rd Congressional District. United States Senator Ben Ray Lujan, New Mexico. Senator Alex Padilla, California. Congressman Richie Torres, New York 15. Next, please welcome the Vice Chair of the House Democratic Caucus from California's 31st Congressional District, Congress Member Pete Aguilar, and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Chair from California's 36th Congressional District, Congress Member Raul Ruiz. They will introduce the Speaker of the House, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, who has a special message to share with us. We both want to express our appreciation to all of you for being part of CHCI's 44th Annual Awards Gala, recognizing Latino excellence. It's our esteemed pleasure to welcome House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She has charted a path for countless others in public service and continues to lead the way as the first woman Speaker of the House. Speaker Pelosi has been and continues to be an avid supporter and tremendous ally of the CHCI community. Welcome the Honorable Nancy Pelosi. Good evening. As House Speaker, it is my honor to once again join the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute for your 44th Annual Awards Gala. Thank you to CHCI Chair Nanette Barragan and also to your President and CEO Marco Davis for their leadership on behalf of Latinos across America. Four decades ago, a proud Californian Congresswoman, Edward Roybal, altered the course of the country by helping found the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, and soon after, CHCI, to empower Hispanic leaders and ensure America meets the needs of the Hispanic community. This year's celebration, Presente, Latinos Leading the Way, lives up to that vision. But it's more than just tonight's theme. It is a reality that all Americans have witnessed. For the past 18 months, Latino essential workers have risked their lives on the front lines to keep all families healthy and safe. From hospitals to supermarkets, home health care to meatpacking, these heroic, heroic leaders are deeply deserving of tonight's award and the gratitude of all Americans. Tonight, we also honor two extraordinary Latino champions. America Ferrara has embodied the American dream, breaking barriers in Hollywood as an actress, producer, and director, and to us inspiring so many. Sylvia Mendez is a civil rights icon, demanding integration in our schools and empowering young Latinos with the education needed to succeed. America and Sylvia, thank you for your leadership, which has truly helped realize CHCI's mission. CHCI has been a force for progress, bringing power and diversity to the Congress. Because of CHCI, our caucus is strengthened by the 38 members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, led by Chairman Raul Ruiz. And we are proud that our House Democratic Caucus is elevated by the leadership of Vice Chair Pete Aguilar, Small Business Chair Nidia Velasquez, and Natural Resources Chair Raul Grijalva, Homeland Security Appropriate Appropriation Subcommittee Chair Lucille Roybal Allard and other outstanding Latino leaders. And President Biden's administration is well served by Latino leaders in top roles, including DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, HHS Secretary Javier Becerra, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona, and SBA Administrator Isabel Guzman, a proud alumna of CHCI. Today, our nation is emerging from a pandemic and an economic crisis, which have hit the Latino community especially hard. As Democrats work to achieve the president's transformative Build Back Better agenda, leadership from CHCI will continue to be essential to ensure that we advance equity and justice in this economic recovery. And Congress will continue to look to CHCI for your partnership as we pass legislation to build a better, Fair America, from securing a pathway to citizenship for dreamers, essential workers, and farm workers, and TPS and DED recipients, to defending the sacred right to vote 
for all Americans, including communities of color. On behalf of the Congress, thank you to all gathered here tonight, virtually and otherwise, for your leadership and partnership, as well as your hard work to lift up the next generation of Latino leaders. Best wishes for a wonderful celebration. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for your inspiring words. Our work to develop the next generation of Latino leaders is year round, and it could not be done without the generous support of our corporate sponsors. Even though our work took place in a virtual setting this year, we continue to make an impact for our community. If ever CHCI's participation and existence was important, it is needed now more than ever so that we can continue to put Latinos on the path to positions of power in all sectors. And you can help us continue that mission. Please consider making a donation at chci.org slash donate to support our vital work of developing Latino leaders. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. There's so much more coming up after these messages from our sponsors. We'll be right back. What kind of a company do I want to work for? A company that's always kind of trying to change the status quo. That has a clear vision. And a company that treats their employees as they would their best friend. Like human beings. To have a bigger impact than just what's in it for them. That is safe for me and for my community. That encourage people to uh, speak up. And you get to ultimately be yourself. I want to work for a company where I know that I matter. Theory Seating is a company dedicated to what is called fixed seating. Stadiums, cinemas, synagogues, and churches. Most of our products are customized for each client. So if an architect has a meeting any place in the world, they're expecting to see that sample right there to be able to take a decision if they're going to buy from us or not. If we don't have the chair on time, we won't be even considered in the bid process. FedEx has been an amazing solution to have the product be delivered on time. Buenas noches, I'm Roberto Azevedo and I'm pleased to join you on behalf of PepsiCo. I just finished my first year with the company. And before that, I led the World Trade Organization, the WTO, and I served in the Brazilian Diplomatic Corps for many years. One of the reasons I was so excited to join PepsiCo is the company's commitment to lifting up the communities we serve. In fact, around this time last year, we launched a diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative focused specifically on Hispanic Americans. We are committing $172 million over five years with a focus on increasing Hispanic representation at PepsiCo and supporting Hispanic businesses and communities. And this is in addition to the $224 million that we invested with Hispanic suppliers in 2020. PepsiCo has supported CHCI since its inception. And over the years, we've steadily expanded our partnership to support CHCI's fellowship and intern programs. Tonight, we're excited to join you in recognizing Latino trailblazers, celebrating the Latino community's resilience through the ongoing pandemic, and spotlighting the next generation of Latino leaders. Oh, oh, we got it? Think if we got it, you got it. Future Engineer Teacher of the Year. Woo! Thank you all. I love each and every one of you. We are the strong, the tenacious, and compassionate members of diverse communities. 
We don't let others define us. We remember our roots while bravely writing the script for our own future. We have an undeniable zest for life and a heart that beats with resounding determination. We celebrate you. When we come together, we can create limitless possibilities for all. Vayamos juntos. Take one. Showtime. You have no idea what I could be. Yeah, yeah, there you go. One more time, please. Oh. It's unreal to witness. They're talking about kicking out all the dreamers. But it's time to make some noise. Let's celebrate our right to exist and to exist with joy. We'll see you guys next time. Woo! Hi, folks. It's Jamie Harrison, chair of the Democratic National Committee. I wanted to take a moment to wish you all a happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Folks, the United States is enriched by the contributions of our Latino communities. The work of Latino voters and elected officials has time and again led the way towards progress in the United States. I want to congratulate the folks who were recognized tonight and thank the Congressional Hispanic Caucus for its commitment to public service. My name is Naomi Barry Bettis, and I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm the Director of Civil Rights for the United States Department of Labor. Uh, I've been in that job for seven years, but I've been in civil rights at the Department of Labor for 20 years since my CHCI fellowship, actually. So I'm driven by a sense of fairness, um, that everybody deserves a shot, that everybody not only has rights, but also responsibilities, and that we're a productive society when those rights and responsibilities are both fulfilled. Without CHCI, so many of these young people would not have that foot in the door here in Washington, D.C. I think it's fair to say that the majority of young and now a little less young Latino leaders in D.C. came here through CHCI. The Washington, D.C., quite frankly, has a great debt to pay to CHCI for bringing those students here really over a 30-year career now. It's super important um, to, to see people in leadership and in, with positions of influence. With education and hard work and a fair shot, um, we can be in these places, we should be in these places, and when we're there, um, to remember what it took to get there. In fact, when you get there, if you think the race is over, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta take a deep breath. You have to have a, a, a bigger mind than that for yourself but then also to recognize that folks are coming behind you, so maybe it's your time then to look back. Welcome back. It's exciting to see the incredible achievements being made by our Latino leaders. CHCI's program participants and alumni don't just learn about public policy, they work closely with members of Congress and other policymakers to shape the public policy landscape. They are overwhelmingly first-generation college goers, the majority of whom come from families with modest incomes. Each of them has the opportunity to take on leadership roles like congressional chiefs of staff and legislative directors in the Beltway, foundation executive directors in philanthropy, C-suite executives in the corporate world, and respected leaders in the nonprofit sector. And now, we're ready to present our current cohort of interns and fellows as we help prepare 45 of America's best and brightest emerging Latino leaders to continue to carry the torch forward, to always be presentes in their communities, to lead the way to a brighter future. During the recent difficulties that have burdened our country, Latinos have proven to be a pivotal force. Our community continues to be presente for the nation and CHCI is leading the way. Let's welcome our newest cohorts of CHCI congressional interns and public policy and graduate fellows. Emerging Latino leaders are standing up. It's time to recognize them for their commitment to the community and the nation, and their engagement in policymaking around important issues. This year's cadre of interns and fellows comes from 21 states. They encompass 44 areas of study at 44 academic institutions across this nation, and 36 are the first in their family to attend college. 
They represent a diverse tapestry of 15 different heritages. These program participants have the chance to make bold contributions to society. They have CHCI's extensive network of dedicated leaders to support them. Each of them has recognized the weight of the opportunities they have been given. Each one is presente, and as part of the Latino community, they are ready to lead the way. Coming up, a special message from President Biden. And later on, our musical entertainment for the evening, Juanes. I'm Janet Aries Martinez. I'm originally from Patterson, New Jersey. I'm an American-born Latina, um, and I, that, that part of my identity is, is rooted in culture, it's rooted in the, the language that I grew up to speak, it's rooted in the values that I hold dear and that I carry with me every day. So that, to me, that drives the, the work that I do now. I came to DC, I was part of the internship, and I had the opportunity to not only get to know um, people I would have never met um, in leadership and public policy, but I also got to know the team here at CHCI and the wonderful work that they do for the Latino community. Seeing the CHCI team in action and, and learning what was possible, um, the, the kind of work that could be done to advance the Latino community. When I saw that, I, I had to think long and hard and I had to figure out what resources I had at my disposal to, to try to be a part of that movement. I think that there's so much to be done to improve the quality of life for Latinos of all ages and also challenge ourselves to be better so that by the time that opportunity comes, you're prepared and ready to, to meet that challenge. With, with leadership, there's responsibility to, to serve the community and I'm passionate about service. With leadership, there's, there's the opportunity to somehow impact things for the better and if I can somehow channel that energy for change, then I think that the journey towards leadership is worth it. CHCI's alumni are succeeding in public policy making along with many other fields. They often share that their time with the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute has contributed to their success and that this formative experience must be reinforced continually. The Alumni Association is dedicated to nurturing that strong connection and to help them build and expand this network of Latino leaders across various industries. Each year, CHCI honors outstanding alumni. Let's meet this year's honorees, Isabel Guzman and Claudia Flores, who have been recognized for their achievements. You, mujeres, you make us proud. You remind me of my mom and other strong women in my life. Felicidades. Congratulations to you both. For many generations, Latinos have inspired us with their artistic talents. They have made us proud with their achievements in a variety of areas that speak to the heart. CHCI continues to recognize those who are not only the greatest amongst the Hispanic community, but also some of the greatest in our country. I'm pleased to welcome the recipient of the 2021 Medallion of Excellence in the Arts, Entertainment, Media, Music, or Sports. With us to introduce this year's honoree is a celebrated actress, producer, and director who I'm honored to call a friend. Mi hermana, she's dedicated her career and spectacular talent to create space for our stories and is herself a previous Medallion of Excellence recipient. Eva Longoria Bastón. And accompanying her is one of our Hispanic Heritage Month co-chairs from California's 29th Congressional District, an outstanding fighter for visibility and representation, who I also call a great friend, Tony Cárdenas. Good evening, thank you for having me at tonight's gala. The Medallion of Excellence is CHCI's most prestigious honor in the Latino community, awarded to an extraordinary individual who impacts the world with her vision, passion, and love of community. I believe that you can't change public policy until you change culture, and the arts can be a powerful platform for sharing Latino culture and uniting 
our community. Every story we tell is another opportunity for our community to be seen as part of the fabric of this country. And through the arts, we can inspire a new generation of leaders who can become a catalyst for change. This year's honoree shares my passion for empowering Latinas, and I am honored not only to call her my colleague, but also my friend. America is the example of what it means to be excellent. America the person, not the country. America has been championing the rights for so many, whether it's women's reproductive rights or visiting kids at the border or attending Zoom call after Zoom call about sexual harassment and gender inequality. She is always the first one to say yes. Yes to la causa, yes to change, yes to justice for all. She inspires me and so many others. And she's not only a fierce advocate and loyal community member, she's family, she's my family. She's my hermana. And I'm so grateful to have her in my corner, to have her in our community's corner. And I hope you continue to lead our community with your intelligence and grace and brilliance. So congrats to America Ferreira for your Medallion of Excellence Award. Wherever you lead, I will follow. As long as Latinos continue to be a shining beacon of strength and hope, members of our community will continue to express their passion through all forms of art. This year's Medallion of Excellence is being presented to a Latina who started her career in arts and entertainment at the young age of 16. Her career has broken boundaries and has opened doors for a new Latino talent, both in front of and behind the camera. Over the last several years, she has emerged as a powerful influencer for women's rights, immigration reform, and social justice. As a member of CHCI's board of directors and co-chair of this year's Hispanic Heritage Month Committee, I am proud to recognize America Ferreira as the recipient of this year's CHCI Medallion of Excellence in the arts, entertainment, media, music, or sports. Um, sir, while well, you got me here, I thought I could tell you a little about myself. Magazines are my passion ever since I was a kid. I've learned so much through them. You know, stuff so beyond my world, and I have tons of ideas. I'm always jotting stuff down on the subway. All I really want is a chance. Bye. Any position or publication. I can't type 100 words a minute. I knew I wanted to be a actress, storyteller when I was as young as five years old. I think I was in kindergarten. The challenges were that, you know, that no one like me existed in the spaces that I wanted to be in. Roles were not written, they didn't exist. My role models were all, you know, the mainstream, you know, Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts and Bette Midler and, you know, Will Smith. And I had to kind of translate that, yeah, I'm a human and, and I have stories and joy and laughter and drama to convey and, and why not me? You know, what we do in our business, it, it changes our culture, right? And so it's so important that we tell our stories and that we see our lives as worthy of being reflected on screen, and America has done so much of that. Hi, um, I just wanted to come and introduce myself. I don't know anyone like America. She has a ferocity of life and a passion for the things that really matter. Each thing, each choice is about how will this make a mark? How will this create a dialogue with people to start having people talk about these things in a way that they have not spoken about before? I am so proud to be a co-founder with her of Poderistas, which is a movement to empower Latino women in this country to really use their own voices, to lead in their communities, to lead on issues of health, to lead on issues of civic engagement. What we believe about ourselves has everything to do with what we see around us. Who's succeeding? What are people like you daring to dream of, daring to step into? The right representations is about seeing the models, the opportunity, the possibility for your life. And what's, I think, so 
beautiful is that there are so many of us doing so many amazing things, but our stories are not told with the frequency that they should be told so that we are reaffirming for ourselves and for each other constantly that we don't need permission to be leaders. We are leaders. I was at the Women's March and I remember stopping because I heard America's voice. She was so powerful and so inspiring. And I remember thinking, this is exactly who she's supposed to be. She was always asking the question, will I be a part of making this transformation? Change is an intermediate step, it seems to me, to America. Her world is about a transformation that actually brings everyone along with it. America is one of these people who's going to measure her life in impact, not in money, not in credits, but in the impact. And I think she is just in the early stages of a life and a career that is going to have tremendous impact on this world. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. America Ferreira. Good evening and buenas noches a todos. I am deeply honored to receive this recognition from the Board of Directors and Advisory Council of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute, led by Chairwoman and Congresswoman from my home state of California, Nanette Diaz Baragan. Thank you all so much for honoring me. I can't wait till we can be back in person together, celebrating with food and music and laughter, feeling the incredible energy of hundreds of spirited Latinos in one room. That energy is always healing, empowering, and fortifying to me. The energy of comunidad. I am the daughter of Honduran immigrants who came to this country seeking better opportunity for themselves and their children. For the better part of my childhood, my mother was a single mother working to raise six children in a foreign country on her own. My assignment was clear. Work hard, follow the rules, and succeed to honor the sacrifices made on my behalf. My crazy childhood dream was to be a storyteller. I didn't know then that by telling my own story through theater, television, and films, I would meet thousands of people along the way who saw themselves reflected in my story, or that I would meet thousands more who, like me, never felt reflected, seen, or welcomed as their whole selves in school, at work, or in the culture. With this revelation, I found my community, and I found my purpose. It is my deepest privilege and honor to empower stories by and for our Latina familia, to use whatever platform and access given to me to make more space and create more power for Latinx storytellers. Because the stories we tell matter. They shape what we believe about ourselves and each other. They tell us how to dream and what to accept for ourselves and our loved ones. And most importantly, they teach us how to treat others. They teach others how to treat us. Stories can protect or destroy a child's safety on the playground, a young man's life on the street, a woman's bodily autonomy, our health, our opportunity, our planet. We all know that our Latinx community is disproportionately impacted by so many of the challenges we face today. Harmful narratives in the media, COVID-19, the climate crisis, the attack on women's reproductive rights. What is it going to take to build real and proportionate power for us in this country? It's going to take all of us knowing each other working with each other, lifting each other up as we imperfectly strive to empower more of our community. 
I know that I am at my best, my boldest, and my bravest when I have my community by my side. I believe from the bottom of my heart that we are each other's greatest strength. Thank you to CHCI for the incredible work it does to create community and to connect generations of Latino leaders to one another. That is how we are going to build power. And thank you for this honor. I am truly grateful and humbled. America, your journey makes us so proud. You know, you've represented us on TV, you've given us refuge at the border. I personally remember watching you rallying Latinas to vote at an event in Florida while I was covering elections. And there you were in the heat in Orlando, but undeterred. Thanks to you, so many more of us have exercised our rights at the polls. Amiga, you deserve this recognition. You know, I remember a Frida Kahlo postcard that my dad gave me when I was a little girl where he wrote, with great privileges come great responsibilities. Show me you can. My dad encouraged me to learn English, to go to college in the United States. And now that he's passed, his legacy makes me give my best in everything that I do. And like me, each new generation of Latinos had to work incredibly hard to make our parents' sacrifice worth it. Para que su sacrificio valga la pena. To provide a better future for our children. Breaking down barriers is an essential calling for Latino leaders, particularly when pursuing their mission for creating equitable education for Latino students. For over 40 years, CHCI has recognized Latinos who are passionate about empowering the next generation. Joining us to introduce the recipient for this year's American Dream Medallion Award of Excellence in Education, Science, Medicine, or Civil Rights are one of our Hispanic Heritage Month co-chairs, Senator Catherine Cortez Masto of Nevada, the first woman elected to represent Nevada in the Senate and the first Latina senator. And last year's honoree, storyteller, activist, change maker, El Incansable, Chef Jose Andres. Hello, people of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute. I am Chef Jose Andres, and I am delighted to be joining the 2021 CHCI Gala. You know, as I said before many times, I'm always looking to the future and to what leaders and causes will be next on the horizon. The CHCI American Dream Medallion Award recognizes those who share that same aspiration. As the winner of last year's award, I am honored to recognize this year's recipient in the category of education. The issue of education is an important one for our Latino community and for Americans in every part of the country. For the past 22 years, this year's recipient has been going to schools across the country, speaking to students and teachers about her pursuit for social and educational equity in the Latino community. She's been instrumental in helping others get access to a quality education. Sylvia Mendez has dedicated her life to educating young people about her and her family's role in the historic appeals court case of Mendez versus Westminster, which paved the way for school desegregation. In her own life, she was able to overcome these barriers to her education, become a nurse, and achieve her dream of traveling the world. Awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Obama, she continues to advocate for advancing education in the Latino community today. We're proud to honor this longtime social activist she embodies CHCI's values of leading the way for the next generation. So it gives me great pleasure to recognize Sylvia Mendez as the recipient of CHCI's 2021 American Dream Medallion in Education, Science, Medicine, or Civil Rights. 
After 1941 in Pearl Harbor, Executive Order 9066 was signed by Franklin Roosevelt that led to the incarceration of Japanese American families. And one of those families was named the Munamitsu family. The Munamitsu family had a farm in Westminster, a thriving farm, and the family banker talked to the Munamitsus about leasing their land during their internment so that when they would return, they'd be able to come back to their farm. Gonzalo and Felicitas owned a small cantina restaurant, but always longed to get into farming, but didn't have an opportunity to do so. And the banker used to come to the cantina, and so the banker said to him, Gonzalo, I know of where you can become the mayordomo of a farm, 40 acres of asparagus in Westminster. He got so excited, he sold the cantina, and that's how we ended up in Westminster. And I remember getting all dressed up, you know, new clothes. My mother always braided my hair, and we were all ready to go, so excited. And then we got to the school, and all of a sudden, my tia says, we're going home and uh, we didn't know what had happened. We as a nation were confronting Nazism, which in some respects was the worst, most exaggerated form of segregation. And we were asking Americans of every background to participate in that war effort. And more than 300,000 Mexican Americans participated in the US military during World War II. More than 9,000 Mexican Americans died fighting for the United States in World War II. And that began to really impact and mobilize communities to say, wait a minute, this is not just. Gonzalo and Felicitas were two of those kind of young parents who looked at the education situation that they were facing with their children, with their children turned away from what really is the nicer school and the school closest to us and forced to go to a Mexican school when they in fact are American children, speak English fluently, and are being given a second-class education. We would all walk, I don't know how many blocks, into the barrio to go to the Mexican school every day. I would say, my dad's fighting and I'm gonna go to that beautiful school. It had manicure lawn, it had beautiful palm trees, but the most important thing at eight years old, they had a playground. That's when they found an attorney named David Marcus who had successfully challenged segregation in other public settings like swimming pools and movie theaters. The school board came to the ranch and, Mr. Mendez, we heard about you getting a lawyer. Just stop this nonsense and we'll allow your children to go to that school. My father got so upset, he said, I am not gonna stop this. And I'm not just fighting for my children, I'm fighting for all the children, not para todos los niños, he said. She saw her father, who was an immigrant from Mexico, her mother, who is from Puerto Rico, try to make better for themselves and for their family. And when they saw that there was injustice taking place, they had courage to bring about change. In 1946, Judge Paul McCormick found in favor of the families, and in 1947, the Ninth Circuit required Orange County School Districts to integrate. This had a ripple effect and ultimately affected millions across the country, paving the way for Brown v. Board of Education. But it took a tremendous toll. Gonzalo died at 51, and part of it was the weight of everything that they had experienced in this process, because obviously there was a lot of pushback, and a lot of the brunt of that fell on Gonzalo, and he died as a young man. I went on to college, became a registered nurse, worked at LA County for 33 years, became assistant nursing director, and decided to retire very young to take care of my mother because she was very sick. And she would say, Sylvia, nadie sabe, nobody knows about this case. You have to go tell it. It's history of the United States, history of California. How can this not be history? California was the first state to be integrated and people don't even know about it. I think she's driven by the fact that she knows that she is someone who has benefited by parents who fought for her and for other students. She is somebody who understands the power of the law, the power of coalition, 
the power of inspiration. And that is why she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama. When I got it, I started crying and crying because it reminded me of how my father had died and nobody had even said gracias. And I knew that this was a way of thanking him. He was getting that Medal of Freedom. It wasn't me, it was him. Gracias for what you did, Gonzalo. Accepting her award, Sylvia Mendez. I feel so honored to be given the Medallion of Excellence by the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute. The highest honor to Latinos who have excelled with their contribution to the development of the next generation of Latino leaders. Especially since my main focus when I speak to students about Mendez versus Westminster is to encourage them to stay in school and obtain a college degree that will lead them to a successful life. I am humble when I think of those who have previously received this award. Estoy muy agradecida de recibir este honor. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Since she was only eight years old, Silvia Mendez has been a pioneer for education and desegregation. She was pushed into the spotlight as a young child and has continued to lead this cause throughout her life. Silvia, our kids are able to go to any school they choose because of you. We're so grateful for your community leadership and commitment to leading the way for the next generation of American Latinos. Returning this evening is CHCI Chair and Congress Member Nanette Diaz Barragan to introduce a very special message from the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Friends, our next speaker is a very special guest who has been a tireless champion for and a friend of the Latino community for many years. He has always supported CHCI's work to develop the next generation of Latino leaders even addressing our gala as our keynote speaker during his first term as vice president in 2012. President Biden has demonstrated his commitment to serve the people throughout his entire career, beginning as a county council member in Delaware. His service and the accolades he has received number too many to count. But one example of his extraordinary contributions is that he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom the nation's highest civilian honor with distinction. President Biden is a true public servant who has always shown compassion and empathy for the struggle of others and a commitment to helping young people reach their full potential. Now, we are proud that he is leading our country with an ambitious agenda to build back better. And most importantly, Joe Biden understands that the story of Latinos is integral to the American story, and that the success of our nation depends on the success of all of us. He stands by our community, not just during Hispanic Heritage Month, but all the time. I am honored that he is with us on this special occasion, and it is my pleasure to introduce the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Thank you, Nanette. You once said that in your district, only 60% of students graduate from high school and 10% go on to college. You said, quote, I'm one of those 10% who beat the odds, end of quote. You know, your story is an inspiration. But the reason I'm so honored to join the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute today is because it's not enough for some people to beat the odds. We need to change the odds. That's what you're doing. That's what we're doing. And I'm proud that my small business administrator is the first CHCI alum to become a member of my cabinet. And Administrator Guzman is making sure that we support Hispanic-owned small businesses. She's part of a historically diverse cabinet that also includes Secretary Becerra, Secretary Cardona, Secretary Mayorkas. I'm proud that the expanded child care tax credit is lifting nearly two million Hispanic children out of poverty. We have so much more work to do. To make sure that those essential workers who you recognize don't just get our gratitude, they get the wages they can raise a family on, safe working conditions, a voice on the job, 
For me, building back better means ensuring that Latino communities also benefit from investments in roads, clean water, and high-speed internet. And the Latino communities also have access to high-quality early education, and free community college, and the right to vote. And I want to see us finally, finally provide dreamers, TPS recipients, farm workers, and essential workers a pathway to citizenship, bringing them out of the shadows so they can receive the protection that our nation's laws and leaders like Chairman Raul Ruiz and the CHC provide. So we have a lot to celebrate, and we have a lot to do. I'm proud to be your partner in this important work ahead. So thank you. God bless the CHCI. God bless America, and may God protect our troops. We appreciate President Biden for taking time to show his support for CHCI. Gracias. Tonight has been an amazing celebration of our community. We've met and heard from those who are working hard every day to make a lasting impact and to develop the next generation of Latino leaders. It has been a privilege hosting tonight's gala and being a part of this experience with you. I hope you are reminded of our power and that our community is so strong, nothing can defeat us, especially when we are unidos. In fact, we are unstoppable when we are together. So take care of yourself. Take care of our people. The world needs us right now. I'm counting on you to take to heart the stories you've seen tonight, and hope that they inspire you to lead the way in our communities. No effort is ever too big or too small to help our common cause. And as we get ready to say good night, please continue to share your CHCI experiences and stories with us on social media using tonight's hashtag CHCIHHM21. From nuestra casa a su casa, I'm sending you poder, amor, and respect, mi gente. I'm Mariana Atencio, at Mariana Atencio on social media. I look forward to continue building on this journey with you. And to close it out, I'd like to welcome back the president and CEO of CHCI, Marco Davis. Marco? Thank you so much for being a fantastic MC, Mariana. And I also want to thank all our deserving honorees and tonight's distinguished presenters. Each of our participants are shining examples of leading the way in their communities and the nation. I also want to thank all the members of CHCI's board of directors, led by our chairwoman, Congress member Nanette Diaz Barragan, and our advisory committee. Your steadfast support and guidance for our organization is leading the way forward. Most importantly, I continue to be amazed by and am forever grateful for the unwavering support and incredible dedication of the CHCI staff who continue to be tireless in their work every single day. And of course, thanks to each of you for tuning in tonight to watch and experience our program with us. We hope you've been both inspired and enlightened by what you witnessed. Our 44th annual awards gala has come to an end, but our important work doesn't stop here. CHCI's commitment to our interns, fellows, and alumni will continue as they take the reins of leadership in this country, standing up, being presentes and leading the way to build power for our Latino community. Let us each commit ourselves when we're needed to answer the call with presente. Together, we can lead the way to a brighter future for all of us. Ha sido un placer estar aquí con ustedes. Buenas noches and please stay safe and healthy. Thank you for attending the 2021 CHCI 44th Awards Gala. Good night.